Is coffee good for our health? What does caffeine influence in our body? How much coffee is too much? Hey guys, it's Ali from European Coffee Trip and to tackle this complex topic, I invited our friend Danny Hofstetter, who has a perfect mix of experience and expertise to help us all understand potential health benefits and risks of drinking coffee. Danny is a former professional triathlete with a Master of Food Science degree from ETH Zurich. On the coffee side, he dedicated his professional career to product development and marketing in companies like Franke and Malkenik. And he became the finalist of the World Brewers Cup Championship 2019. This video is sponsored by Standard, a print magazine about coffee culture. Okay, so Danny, um, I have a big question for you. So why is the, the research and science around coffee so confusing? So is coffee actually good or is it bad for us to drink? Well, I mean, I don't want to jump the gun, but coffee is good anyway. I think it's not just coffee that is so complex. I mean, nutrition research is complex because if you try to imagine our bodies and, and, and so much stuff going on in, in our metabolism, it's really hard to research like one particular substance or its effect on it because you need to do such a concise study design, get enough people for your experiments. And, and that's why it, it was basically so difficult and, and, and going back and forth of coffee being good or bad. So um, what are the, the key compounds in, in coffee that affects our body and brain? There are three major ingredients or active ingredients in coffee that really have an effect on our body. Uh, and it's caffeine, it's chlorogenic acid, and it's diterpenes. And we subjectively only notice the short-term or the immediate effects, and that's mainly caffeine as a stimulant. Mm -hmm. So, so what should we know about it? What should we know about caffeine? Caffeine is a stimulant. Uh, it, it's a similar uh, substance like adrenaline. So you ha may have heard of the fight and flight syndrome. So it's a very activating uh, process that is originally designed uh, from our primitive minds to, to survive, to run away from, uh, from danger. Uh, and nowadays uh, it's still happening as, as a stress symptom. Um, but that's also the effects that we realize. I mean, about 30 minutes after uh, caffeine consumption, we realize the, the activating effects. And that's mainly due to an increased heart rate, uh, some smaller increase in blood pressure. But what we realize most, especially in the mornings, is that it stimulates the brain. So uh, we're more alert, we're more focused, and it actively fights fatigue or, or drowsiness. Because like a key and the lock, the signaling substance for drowsiness is adenosine. And caffeine blocks the adenosine receptors. And that makes us feeling more awake, more alert when we drink coffee. Yes, there is kind of an ideal dose. There's even a lethal dose. Because as you know, caffeine is basically a poison. And it's the, the coffee tree's protection against uh, diseases or pests. And funny enough, it's the same effects that is killing the pests when they attack the coffee tree that we like to have as a positive effect. So let's let's go from the worst end. And the worst is, is normally death. So the lethal dose of caffeine is about 10 grams. Uh, but I think we need to put this in perspective. We talk about harmful effects because 10 grams of pure caffeine equals about 80 to 100 double shots of espresso. And, and it's safe to say that you cannot drink so much coffee without vomiting or, or, or really kind of falling into a coma or whatever, because your, your stomach shuts down and, and, and whatnot. So I think it's safe to say that you cannot kill yourself or someone with coffee. But the safe dose is about 400 milligrams of coffee uh, a day. And that's depending on your brew recipe and, and, and whether it's espresso or filter coffee. Uh, that's between four or six cups a day. Chlorogenic acid is the ingredient that is uh, responsible for most of the long-term benefits that we notice. It's a very potent antioxidant. 
And nowadays, where everybody has heard of oxidative stress and, and uh, antioxidants uh, as, as food supplements, uh, that should be a known term. So basically, an antioxidant is fighting very aggressive, active substances that uh, occur in our bodies and that can put harm to either uh, our cell membranes or, or even cell uh, core through their reactive species. And antioxidants, they have a mechanism where they can quench these oxidative species. And that's why we more and more find out in long-term oxidative stress that this is responsible for many, many uh, diseases. Um, oxidative stress is also related to inflammation. And that's why that antioxidants have an anti-inflammatory effect compared to uh, beverages that contain antioxidants, such as tea or even beer, uh, coffee is by far the strongest. And in many people, it's the most important antioxidant source in their food. If they don't eat much, uh, much vegetables or fruit, then coffee is basically their go-to antioxidant. Yeah, the roasting process actually decreases uh, some of the antioxidants. But still, I mean, when we look at uh, the health effects of coffee, I don't know many people consuming green coffee. And so the, the remaining antioxidants in the roasted coffee are, are still potent enough to result uh, in, in these benefits. But funny enough, when we talk about specialty coffee, which normally has a bit of lighter roast profile, uh, in the lighter roast, there is actually more antioxidant uh, present. So that's another reason why we shouldn't drink the really dark roast. <laughs> and now let's talk briefly about the sponsor of this video, Standard. It's an independent print magazine about coffee culture and people that surround it. Since we are subscribers ourselves, we just received the new issue number 21 with the theme Wink, Smoke and Coffee. As always, it features 15 inspiring stories, articles, interviews and essays with beautiful photographs and illustrations. We enjoyed reading the journey of two US barista champions to open their own coffee roastery, the in-depth look on greenwashing in specialty coffee industry or the story of Yemeni coffee that pairs well with delicious Yemeni beans, roasted by Supremo in Germany, that you receive as a subscriber. It's really cool to actually drink Yemeni's coffee while reading the story of Yemeni's coffee. So, if you haven't subscribed yet, you should go to standardmag.com ECT and get a yearly subscription that covers four issues of Standard, free worldwide shipping and coffee samples from some of the best roasters in the world. Now, back to coffee and health topic. So I took a sip from my filter coffee, lightly roasted of course, so we can look a little deeper into the underlying science and long-term health benefits of drinking coffee. And for coffee there, the latest and, and greatest meta study, a study that integrates all the studies having ever looked into these uh, questions, uh, was published in the British Medical Journal in 2017. And that put together over 200 studies and, and on long-term coffee consumption. And it clearly showed that there is a, a significant reduction in the risk of cardiovascular mortality. So dying from a heart attack or cardiovascular disease in general, which means you have less arterial problems or cardiac uh, incidents. And then which uh, something that is really interesting and is directly correlated to the antioxidant story that I was referring to earlier is the reduction in cancer risk, especially prostate cancer, melanoma, but also cancer of, of the gut and, and uh, the oral cavities. And because caffeine and chlorogenic acid is also directly involved in metabolizing fat, which happens in the liver, it also reduces the risk of chronic liver diseases and type 2 diabetes. And something that is rather new, that on the neurological side, uh, that the risk of acquiring Parkinson's disease is also smaller in the cohort that drinks coffee uh, compared to people that uh, don't drink coffee. And did the, the researchers find any, any negative or like any significant negative effects of, uh, of drinking coffee? I, I, I struggle to believe that when I saw it for the first time, but there is actually almost no negative effects and, and it, it only concerns a small or 
temporary <laughs> group of people, and that's basically pregnant women. There has been a discussion for so many years, should pregnant women drink coffee or not? And today we know they can drink coffee, but probably not as much as when they weren't pregnant. Because during pregnancy, the half-life of caffeine or the caffeine clearance from a pregnant woman's body is, is almost reduced to half. So uh, the effect of caffeine is, is, is longer than when, when you're not pregnant. The, the mechanisms aren't uh, already understood, but, but we found out that, that it takes longer. And also because it's kind of active for longer, you should reduce your consumption to about 200 milligrams. So it's safe to drink two cups of coffee. Because if you exaggerate on caffeine consumption during pregnancy, it can cause premature birth and, and also a low birth weight. Uh, and if we really talk about high doses, basically it can even cause miscarriage. But I think that, uh, that's even like with excessive consumption. So if you are not pregnant nor to stress, what's the optimal dose of coffee to drink? And what's a good timing according to science? The result of this meta-study I, I mentioned is basically an overall dosage uh, recommendation. And that says that between three to five cups of coffee per day is safe and has the highest health benefits. It doesn't really matter whether we talk espresso or filter, because as you know, when you consume filter, you, you consume higher volumes. But basically, it's like for like. So three to five cups are on that very peak of the bell-shaped curve before you see decreasing incremental effects. And that sweet spot where you say you get enough stimulation effects, you get all the health benefits that you try to achieve. And with five cups a day, I mean, for, for myself, I think that's, that's plenty. Many people ask us also how many cups of coffee you drink, and, and I, I think I rarely kind of exceed the five cups. So it's, it's good that I'm still in a limit, even though for some people it's already a lot. Uh, is, is there a good time and a bad time to drink coffee actually? And what's, what's your suggestion in this area? Uh, if you are used to caffeine, then you're not so sensitive um, and you can drink it more or less all day. Uh, for me, early morning is definitely time where I rely on coffee. That's also how you train your body. I mean, if you stay away from coffee for a week or two, you don't rely on getting your caffeine dose in the morning again. So it, we're very malleable in these terms. But since it does fight fatigue, for me, coffee in the morning is, is, is the best effect, best bang for buck. And then if people struggle with falling asleep, they should definitely stay away from coffee um, after 4 p.m. Because if you really increase the half-life to sensitive people to six hours, then if you drink at four, you, you can fall asleep or go to bed at, at around 10. And that's, that's, a, that's a fair time. And, and something I, I really did like back in the days where I was still competing as an endurance athlete was kind of your power nap over lunchtime. And then it's a good thing to get a strong coffee, lay down for 15, 20 minutes. And then once you get back up again, you feel the caffeine kicking in. And so you, you get the downtime and the uptime. <laughs> Now, we know how much coffee we should drink to maximize health benefits for our body, but doesn't matter if it's filter or espresso, black or coffee with milk. And what about decaf coffee? Um, there are slight differences. Um, like from a chemical point of view, it's, it's uh, the filter medium, whether we talk uh, paper or even metal less, but like the, the rare and, and few cases people still use kind of a cotton filter, they, they retain the deterpins, substance of cafestol or caveol. And these are also um, antioxidants. They are um, anti-cancerogenic or anti-inflammatory, but they have a strong influence on the cholesterol metabolism. I've never heard anyone suffering from high cholesterol levels because he or she only drinks uh, espresso coffee. But I mean, on a theoretical level, there are differences in the chemical substance involved and we know they have an effect, but the scale of the effect is, in my opinion, rather marginal. I think there are two topics involved in the question. I mean, basically the discussion whether milk as in cow milk is healthy or not, 
and I'd really like to avoid this discussion because it's it's a, a downward spiral with no end. Um, I personally like milk and I consume milk, uh, not so much in coffee because I prefer black coffee. But coming back to the health question, there is actually no difference in the health effects if you add milk to your coffee. Caffeine digestion or, or uptake is probably a bit slower, especially if you add high fat milk content because the fat slows down digestion. But in terms of your health benefits, there is no difference. Uh, obviously, you need to factor in uh, that if you consume a lot of uh, milk beverages, especially like these tall, gigantic lattes or so, that, that milk is a high caloric food. Uh, and, and that can influence your health, but that needs to be considered in your overall nutrition and not just in your coffee consumption. It depends a bit on the decaffeination process. And we see that during this process, there is a slight reduction in antioxidants. But basically, you still have most of the benefits that we've mentioned uh, before. I think where it's interesting is if people are struggling with reflux, it's clearly shown that decaf is significantly better for them. Because apart from the acids in coffee, caffeine is also influencing acid reflux. And whether it's decaf coffee or decaf tea, you see that they have a lot less problems, uh, whether it's uh, from the esophagus or that, that heartburn that you notice in, in, in correlation with uh, reflux. All right, that was a massive amount of lessons from coffee and nutrition science. Before we finish the call, I asked Danny to sum it up and give you the last advice. I think the, the most important key takeaway is yes, coffee is healthy and has immediate and long-term health benefits as long as you stay within a reasonable consumption. And that means in that case, three to five cups a day. If you're pregnant, limit your coffee consumption to maybe two cups a day and then space it out over your day when they serve you best. So if you have one in the morning and one in the afternoon and that keeps you well going through your day, that's, that's perfect. But if you struggle in, in getting drowsy and falling asleep easily, then don't consume coffee later in the evening. And, and basically, Drink more light roasted coffee because it has more antioxidants <laughs> and it just tastes better. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. It was really interesting to absorb all the knowledge from Danny and share it with you. Let us know what you learned. Was there something new, something that you didn't know or you thought is totally different that will be shared with you in this video? Well, let us know in the comments and I'm looking forward to see you in the next video very, very soon. Thank you. Bye bye.